Bill and Teresa Casanelli from HomeGeekery.com, and we're here to introduce to you some games and shows and whatever happens to interest us at the time. So we're just going to look over a few things and tell you what we think about them. And how shall we start this off? I believe you have a book. Uh, I do. I went to the library, public library, and found Hall is Undead. Right now, zombies are in. It's the big thing. This is by Alan Goldsher. And this is a comedy book. You'll find it under humor. It deals with an alternate universe. What if the Beatles were zombies? Started by John. And, uh, John went and bit the rest of the band and made them all into undead. And But they kept the same music, the same songs. And they have a little parallel universe where Mick Jagger of the Rolling Stones is a zombie hunter and uh, and at their concerts they kill people as well as play their music. And it's a really good read, it's interesting, I've not finished it yet but it's soon to be a major motion picture. So I thought I'd let that out to you. Um, not really good for children though. I wouldn't let my kids read it or see it so. <laughs> I don't know. Our kids might enjoy something like that. Um, I wanted to present... This is uh, one of my favorite CDs for, for gaming. It's actual a Dungeons & Dragons uh, soundtrack for gaming, which, you know, everybody likes a little ambiance. So this is by a band called Midnight Syndicate, and they actually do a lot of other um, music that's meant for background, I believe for like Vampire the Masquerade and, and games like that. So this is all instrumental and um, when did this come out? 2003? Somewhere around there? But it's actually got the D&D stamp on it so it's official Dungeons and Dragons soundtrack music. But uh, it's something that I've always loved. Um, I finally dug it out again because it got buried while we were moving and um, I want to bring it out for my Pathfinder game because I do run a Pathfinder game and I think it would be a lot of fun. That's right, we're parents who role play <laughs> on Thursday nights. <laughs> Let's see, what else? Oh, I've got a I've got a nice little game here. This is not released yet. It's going to soon be. It's called Munchkin Zombies. And this is a fun game. It details if you've ever played any of the Munchkin games before, you've played Munchkin Zombies. It's the same type of game, just with zombie goodness. And let's see. Instead of having classes and races, your zombies have mojo and powers. Powers are similar to the ones in Munchkin Bites, where your power level cannot exceed your physical level. So that would be a really good mixture with the munchkin bites especially with the red borders around the cards i believe it's also similar to super munchkin which also has powers and it works the same way in which your powers uh, your power number has to equal your level or lower so it's very similar in that respect and uh you know same classic munchkin artwork um, john kovalik oh yes you know, it, it's it's a lot of fun. I mean, if you love the Munchkin series, this definitely follows along with the rest of the series, and it's a lot of fun. You've got unusual items like, for armor and weapons, you've got shopping carts, your own pancreas and spleen, <laughs> hand <laughs> grenade, <laughs> throw a hand. And, I mean, the artwork is also, like, I said, like she said, very funny, John Kovalik. Comes with a cool new die with a munchkin head for the number one. It's kind of pearl, you know, got a pearl color to it and with the munchkin head, which I really like. I've been having a lot of fun demoing this game. I suggest you pick it up the moment it is released here. Steve Jackson Games. And what else do we have here? <clears throat> well, we actually just got one of these games in the mail to to review, and it's called Leaping Lemmings. It's by GMT Games, and when uh, me and Bill first opened this up, we were actually very impressed because 
the cards and all the pieces are very well made. It's not it's only that; it's one of the first and only games I've ever seen that came with individual baggies for the pieces, mm -hmm. and they had small holes in them so that they were not airtight, which is good. So you try to get the air out. I mean, that was a brilliant idea. More games should do that. And uh, <clears throat> it comes with a set of player cards, so. Everybody can have one so they know how the, how their turns work, you know, what happens during the game. So it makes it very easy. Um, it does come with a game board. And um, the whole point of this game is you're a bunch of scientists who want to settle a bet about... Using millions of dollars worth of <laughs> taxpayers' money and grants to settle a $20 bet about uh, uh, lemmings leaping over a cliff, you know, and um, you have different clans, and they don't have any special powers or unique abilities, the different clans, it's more of just, you know, what type of fun clan do you want to play, so um, you have like the, the hippie clan, and you have the biker clan, you have the Ritz clan, which are the snobby rich ones. You have the Viking clan. <laughs> you have the soldier clan. And you have the IQ clan, which are, you know, the smarty pants. So, the, and that's, like I said, just for fun. No special abilities or anything like that. Um, me and Bill did play a two-player game. Uh, which does play different from a three, four, five, and six-player game. Yes. Um, I personally felt it was a little sluggish as a two-player game. It didn't seem um, like it moved quickly enough for me, and maybe I'm just an impatient person. I don't know. Or it could have been just our first time playing. Or our first time but, playing. Uh, I found it to be quite fun, really easy to pick up, and the differences were subtle, like uh, the fact that each player controlled an eagle. The eagles are trying to come in and munch chow down on the uh, lemmings, and in a normal game, a three player or more, one player plays both of the eagle, rolls both the dice. In a two player game, each player plays a different die and then they switch it off at certain times. I mean, I can see where you can get frustrated with the slowness, but at the same time, I can see it becoming a really fast paced, fun game with three or more players, and I can't wait to try it again. Um, we did also play test it with our 10 year old daughter. Um, and the age is on here. Eight and above. Eight and above for ages. She is 10, and she did pick up on it very, uh, quickly. very quickly. So I think, you know, their age range is just about right on it. I definitely think kids can play along. There's nothing graphic or unsuitable for children in this, so it's definitely something you can make as a family game. Highly recommended for both the quality of the game and the sheer funness. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, you know, we'll get a chance to play it with more people and we'll be able to give you uh, a more detailed review about that because uh, I think we'll get a different experience with more people. Who are above the age of 10. 